Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about memory allocation for NumPy arrays. In our previous classes, we clearly we had a basic intuition about NumPy arrays. This is a continuation class. Please follow our playlist from the beginning so that you will have a better understanding of the complete Python language. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Let's understand how memory is allocated to list. Let's refresh that concept. We already discussed this in our previous classes. Then we go into the how memory is allocated for NumPy arrays. Let's take an example. Let's take a list. List is equal to 1, 2, 5. These are the elements in the list. So how memory is allocated to the list? This we already discussed. One is given a space here. This is our random access memory and the address locations are given. 0th address, 1st address, 2nd address location, 3rd so on and like that. Each address location is of 1 byte. This is the random access memory which we are following in our previous examples. The same random access memory addressing scheme will be used. Different addressing schemes will be there. Those concepts will become under a computer organization. Please follow our computer organization playlist for the deeper insights of the memory organization okay and each each memory location is of one byte here so this one if you want to save it here this is the address location given for uh, integer one integer two is given the address location uh, five integer five is given the address location three this is how the list elements are saved they are not continuous wherever the space is uh, there they will save the elements and these references these references means uh, memory addresses are saved here in the list so in order to access the elements first we have to go here find the address means reference value then go to this memory location we have to access the element from there but this is not the situation is now in numpy arrays numpy arrays are continuous memory allocations elements are in continuous order if you know the starting address you can go to anywhere that's the advantage of of numpy arrays we can easily access the elements you'll understand why we can easily access the elements when we check the how memory is allocated to arrays the point here is continuous memory allocation so in array memory is continuous here it is not continuous we are maintaining the references here what happens so let's take this so before going into the memory allocation this is our random access memory 0th memory address so on 100th memory address so on 500th memory address so this random access memory we are converting this into this direction so for better understanding of the concept of memory allocation for arrays we are converting our random access memory into horizontal axis 0th memory address so on 100 and 500 the same one we are drawing it in the horizontal axis from now onwards we will use this notation for a random access memory so there are two two types of allocation one is row measure order and the second one is column measure order let's understand by taking the example how row measure order will be allocated space and how to access the elements if the elements are saved in row measure order how to access the elements if elements are uh, placed in column measure order uh, those things will be discussed in this class uh, let's take this example this is the two by two this is a how many this is a my uh, two dimensional matrix and two dimensional arrays and these are the indexes 0th index first index and second index row indexes these are the column indexes these basics are discussed in our previous class 0 1 2 3 4 index starts from 0 index starts from 0 if you want to access the element first row second column means 8 how to access that how it will calculate inside what happens inside that we will try to understand so first of all row measure order means how the memory is allocated and how these elements are saved in our random access memory take the first row so here our assumption is each integer is taking two bytes of memory space each integer is taking two bytes of memory space so this is our random access memory and the address location starts from 50 and before that some address locations after this we are having some address locations from 50 is the beginning address 50 51 use it to save the integer one here integer is taking two bytes of space so this one is converted into binary values and these two bytes is used to save the binary value of one integer two is saved in 52 53 location each each integer is taking two locations here because each location is of one byte 
how many bytes you need to save the integer two bytes are required like that one two three four five means first row is taken and uh, arranged in the continuous memory location second row is taken please continue it that is how row major order will take six seven eight nine ten third row 11 12 13 14 15 11 12 13 14 15 this is how two dimensional arrays will be saved in your memory in row major order now we have to understand how to access these elements in order to access the element first row second column what we have to do here in order to go here we have to jump one row we have to jump this row then how many elements we have to jump two elements so we have to jump one row then two elements that is how we have to jump and go to this location if you want to access an element two comma two means second row second column how many rows we have to jump we have to jump two rows then we have to jump two elements this is the element which we needed so based on this logic we will start from here and we'll go to the element that we required so in order to if you want to access first row second column how we write the syntax x of 1 2 this is the syntax to access the element in our last class we discussed it x of 1 2 means first row second column in order to go to first row how many rows we have to jump one single row one row we have to jump so each row how many elements are there five elements are there each element uh, what is the size of each element two bytes so based on this we'll go to the location that we needed what is the starting address of this uh, memory location 50 plus how many rows we have to jump one row each row how many elements are there five elements are there each element is of size 2 that's why 5 into 2 multiplied by number of rows plus after that how many elements we have to jump two elements each element of size 2 so 2 into 2 4 plus 5 into 2, two 10 plus 50 64 is the location let's check here 64th location what's the element we have 8 that is how we jump the elements whatever the elements we needed this is the calculation that is done in python this is the calculation they will do inside and they will get the element from this location see here in order to access 8 where the at what location the 8 will be at 64 and 65 we are got getting the starting address from 64th location how many bytes we have to access two bytes so 64 65 it will access it will get the element 8 this is how it will calculate the indexing and get the element let's take one more example so that you will have a better understanding of the how it will calculate the indexing x of 2 2 second row second column we have to access in order to access that what is the starting address 50 T plus how many rows we have to jump 0 8th row first row we have to jump so 2 into 5 into 2 each row is having 5 elements each element is of size 2 plus 2 into 2 how many elements after this how many elements we have to jump 2 elements each of size 2 size 2 2 bytes so that's why total is 74 x of 2 2 means see this is the example x of 2 2 means 13th value value 13 should be at what location it is at 74th location 74 location this is how row major order will be and that is this is how it will calculate the indexing whatever the element we needed it will calculate that index value and get the element from that memory location let's try to understand what's a column major order means so the same way we are taking the rows and placing it here instead of taking the rows if you take the columns take the first column place it here take the second column place it continuous take the third column continuous take the fourth column continuous take the fifth column continuous that is how column major order will be so here the same example so 1611 this is the first column place it here 2712 next column 3 8 13 next column 4 9 14 next column 5 10 15 this is how the elements are saved the memory locations are given for accessing these elements this is how if these are saved like this this we call it as row ma column major order there are advantages uh, in different applications uh, in some situations uh, we are not discussing about those applications uh, in some situations uh, 
column major order will be beneficial in some situations row major order will be beneficial you can you can insist on the python to say whatever the way you want to save you can insist on python how to insist on python to save in row major order column major order the syntax we will check out at the end of the class so how to calculate if you want to access the element first row second column element 8 if you want to access so the in this way the row column major order has been saved so we have to jump first column we have to jump second column then one element we have to jump one element then we get the element 8 that is how we have to access the element x of 1 2 how many columns we have to jump we have to jump two columns after that how many elements we have to jump one element each column is having how many elements we are having in each column we are having three elements the same equation 50 plus how many columns we have to jump here previously how many rows we have to jump that we considered now we are considering how many columns we have to jump 2 into each column is having three elements each element is of size 2 so that's why 3 into 2 6 6 to 12 plus after that how many elements we have to jump one element one each element is of size 2 1 into 2 2 total is a 64th location so at 64th location we are having 8 this is how we will access the elements in a column measure order now coming to the syntax how we will insist python to save it in row measure order column measure order in order to in order to define an array in our last class we discussed that we are using the function array function np means numpy package numpy module np dot array we are giving array as a one two three single dimensional array and d type is equal to int integer values will be considered comma these two value these two uh, uh, variables we already discussed in our previous class coming to the next variable order is equal to c c means row major order order is equal to f means column major order whatever you say here it will save it in the row major order and column major order why it is given as c means c languages uses row major order photon language uses column major order that's why they have given the names c and f c means row major order f means column major order Hope you understand the concept. If you have any questions regarding the concept, please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.